Hi everybody, Mary here. And for our fully online physics, let's talk a little bit about the syllabus and the grading systems, um, how are points going to be earned, how are grades going to be calculated. Not the most exciting thing, but really important. And I know most students care a lot. They want to know exactly how grades are going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Canvas. And our first page of Canvas for our course you go down near the bottom of that first page, you are going to find a copy of the syllabus. You don't necessarily need to print this unless it makes you happy. If it makes you happy, absolutely print it. So I'm going to talk through the highlights and uh, hopefully we're going to get a lot of your questions answered here. Oh, just a little background, a lot of the information that is on any university syllabus is for transfer. When you transfer to another university, uh, they need to know on the syllabus number of graduate credits, how many weeks, what format was it in, and things like that. Very detailed course description, course competencies. Those are all very important to have in writing, core abilities. In the previous video, we talked some about textbook and required materials. We need that free OpenStax textbook that you can download. Uh, the physics lab kit that you have to purchase a voucher for at the library, excuse me, at the bookstore. And then you're going to order that and they'll send the box directly to you. Besides that, you're also going to need some common household items, things like tape, scissors, uh, some small boxes, food items, canned goods. And these are things that I try and give you some examples of what you can use, common household items that you really are going to need in order to complete the labs. We talked about the fact that you are going to periodically need to print and a scanner app of some sort unless your phone is preloaded with a scanner. A uh, scientific calculator is a must. You have to have something that can handle uh, scientific notation and big numbers like and sine and cosine and trigonometry functions. Technology requirements, you have to have access to Microsoft Office. That is going to be a big deal. Microsoft Office includes Word, uh, PowerPoint, and Excel. You are going to need Excel for graphing. And by week two, you're going to be graphing in Excel. So if you don't have that, that's something to do. Talk to the e-learning specialist about how to get that downloaded. So let's talk about how this class is going to flow grades wise. This is an online class. Um, and what that means, it's online, but it is not self-paced. You're going to have multiple days or weeks to do a variety of, si of assignments. They will all have due dates, but you may always work ahead. If you decide you want to work ahead, you are certainly allowed to do that. Uh, I have students that do this all the time. They have a hunting trip coming up. They have a wedding coming up and they say, can I work ahead? Can I do two weeks worth of work in one? Absolutely. And I think that's very mature and that's very professional of you to take that responsibility. Time and rigor. This is a four credit college class. It's very typical to assume that it's gonna take three hours minimum per one credit of a university course. So please don't be surprised or shocked if this class takes you at least 12 hours per week to watch the videos, do the homework, and do the labs. If your mathematical and scientific background is a little weak, you may take more time. So just be prepared, this will take some time. This is not the quite kind of course you're going to put in two hours on a Sunday night and be done. Um, that's not going to happen. Grading and grading policies. The grades are going to be spread out over a variety of assignment types. Each are going to be worth points. There's going to be a total point and you're going to have a percentage based on how many points you earned. There are going to be study guides, homework problems, labs, quizzes, and tests. Um, we have 11 study guides, 10 points each, 11 homework problems that equal 219 points for all of them. The chapters that are larger contain more homework problems and sometimes they're spread out over two weeks while some chapters, those are going to be less. Labs, we're going to do 14 of those and they are going to be 20 points each. Quizzes, 30 points each except one converting quiz which is 25. 600 point tests and one test that is 50. Grading scales pretty standard 90, 80, 70, and 60. 
When it comes to the tests and the quizzes, these are all going to be online and they are going to be timed. So time is part of that assessment. So time is something that you have to pay attention to. Um, if you have an accommodation plan that allows you more time for those tests, you've got to present me with your accommodation plan from Disability Services as soon as possible to make sure that I can adjust those online times for you. If you just have a challenge taking the test that is timed, I'm sorry, but that is the way it works. These tests will be timed. I've had students in the past who try and learn the information while they're taking the test. That's not how it works. You learn the information up front, then you take the tests. And I've had students who told me they try and look up every answer while they're taking the test online. That's not the way this is supposed to operate. That's one of the reasons why the tests are timed. We're going to do one lab per week. Those labs must be submitted on the lab report format um, and they must be scanned and batch scanned into one document and then uploaded into Canvas. So you're going to need a scanning app of some sort or a scanner on your phone or come to CVTC and use our scanners to make that work. Study guides, you can fill those out either on paper and pencil and scan them in or you can type in the answers and upload them that way. Homework problems, these you're going to have to write out by hand because mathematically that's the only way it's going to work. Um, please don't attempt to do all of these in one sitting. They can be as many as 30 some problems for one chapter. Please do a few homework problems, learn a little more, do a little bit more homework problems. That's how you learn physics. There is work provided, there is help and hints provided for lots and lots of the homework. Because of that, simply writing down the answer will not earn you credit. It's not going to get you credit if you just get right down the answer because I am providing you the answers. You have to show me your work. That's what the assignment is. Can you work them out? Can you actually figure out how to get those right answers? Drop lowest grades. The grades come in categories and one grade will be dropped, dropped from the lab category and one grade will be dropped from the homework study guide category. Why? We all get sick. We all have a family emergency. Our kids get sick. Our car has problems. We have a crazy fight with our beloved. Things happen. And so this is to deal with the fact that you have family emergencies and we all do. The grading program begins dropping these grades immediately, so you should see the effect of those immediately. Please don't ask for extra credit. You're not going to get any, so please don't ask for it. Um, there are no test retakes. Please study before the exams. Do not ask for a retest. You're not going to get one. Um, absences. It, it is your responsibility to take notes if you don't, or, yeah, that's, you have to watch the videos to get the notes. That's how this whole deal works. Late assignments. Maximum of one week for late work that can be turned in, and there is going to be a 50% penalty off of anything that's turned in late. I'll be blunt, I really hate late work. It's kind of a pain in my bottom, but I totally understand that it's going to happen. You know, sometimes life just gets ahead of people or kind of falls all over your ears and you got to turn something in late. But you have one week maximum. Um, work is always due at 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. And so if you turn it in on one at 1 a.m., it's late. So make sure you reach those due dates if and you get one exact week to the to the clock um, in order to turn that week work in and no work is accepted after the final posted date of the semester. And this late stuff does not apply to tests and quizzes. So tests and quizzes are not allowed to be turned in late or turned or taken late. Once they close, they are done and you're not going to be able to take a quiz or test if you just plain blow it off. You will take a zero on that assignment. Planned absences. If you know ahead of time that you're going to miss a class, 
You can turn stuff in early. Um, we've got a few things that will be dropped if you have a family emergency, and you've got some policies for late work. So most of us can deal with that. Extenuating circumstances, if life gets serious, I mean serious here, we're talking about serious illness for you or someone you are close to in your immediate family. And we are talking immediate family, not great Aunt Harriet's second cousin's third nephew's brother-in-law's dog. We're talking immediate family then, you know, talk to me and we can work something out. But this is going to involve a real serious event. But uh, and this is going to mean a plan of some sort. So I don't do this willy nilly and I do this almost never. So make sure it is a big deal. But talk to me if something really serious happens. And I hope you have a really boring semester and nothing serious happens. No show policy. It's a CBTC policy. If you do not participate in the course in the first week, you will be administratively dropped and you are gone from the course. Um, academic honesty, please just, I've had people who've been thrown out of online courses because they cheat. Um, you say, how do they cheat? Well, two, two students turn in the exact same work. Um, that, yes, that's, you know, they look, they look the same, exactly the same. Well, of course, you know, you can figure it out. Um, do, 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 a lot of this is important information from the college, but I want to just hit the highlights here. Keys to success, couple things I'm going to really strive. One is make sure you have a schedule. Schedule yourself some time every week to watch the videos, work on problems, do the labs. Make this like a job. Every week I'm going to these two hours on Monday night, these hours on Wednesday, this hour on these three hours on Saturday. This is my physics time. Carve this into your life. Online classes, sometimes people do not succeed because they think they're going to accidentally do it in their spare time. Well, trust me, you do not have spare time. You have to schedule time for this class. Do some homework every single day. It's easier to keep up than catch up. If you start to get lost, ask for help right away. There is no shame in asking for help. There is shame for waiting till you are so deeply confused that there is no way out. That is shameful. Okay, so if you start to get a little lost, ask. That is that a wise student is going to do. If you get faced with a difficult problem, try and give it your best try. That's how science works. Science is problem solving. And problem solving can be really, really fun and very rewarding when you figure it out. So it's going to be an exciting semester. It's going to be a fun class. I know you're going to have some challenges along the way, and that's what I'm here for. So give me a holler. Uh, send me an email. Give me a call in my office. But in some semesters, I'm in my office a lot. Some semesters, I'm not in my office very much. Um, the email is the best way to communicate with me because I teach it four or five different buildings. So I am all over the planet and email is the best way to contact me. All right, we off we go.